Hi everyone, this is Mary Flower. I thought I'd do a short video tonight, and I have shown this in my last video that I made, and it was my uh, Eloise Wilkins book, and it's like three inches thick, and like uh, seven by nine, and I love how it turned out, and but it was a lot of work. I'm still working in here, adding a few little fun things in it. But I wanted to make a more simple version. This has six signatures. It has a lot of pages. Probably, you know, I put 11 uh, papers in each one of those signatures, so it's really big. But I wanted to do a more simple version, and I wanted to show you with this um, inset-type uh, image in here, if you can see it, that I learned from Johanna Klo's, um web, I mean, her YouTube, and I really enjoyed that. And a little bit about uh, how I changed the cover. So what I wanted to do was make some more simplified versions of the same thing, only with a single signature. And uh, that's what these are. These aren't finished, but and I'll show you how I'm working on these. These are some of the little, and these are all Eloise Wilkins uh, images too. And I think these turned out really cute. I haven't put the um, uh, signature in here, the papers in here, but I do want to show you what I'm working on. Here's another one. I think this is really cute. They're pretty much, um, you know, five, six, seven inches by eight inches, somewhere like in there. And I haven't finished one. Now, finished these, but this one I is a little farther than the other one, and it has the same image. Oh, well, something similar. It actually is a little Miss Muffet, I think, is what it was. And on, on here, and uh, I did put a single signature in this one and I can do a real quick flip through on that in just a minute but I wanted to show you how I did this uh, with a Sizzix and uh, some other um, photograph you know photograph books like um, photograph albums and you can get those at the thrift store really cheap but first of all I want to show you this I really like this um it almost looks like old glass on there and all i did was i used uh this diamond glaze on it and at first i thought oh i don't know if i like that but i think i like how it turned out it kind of has that feeling of old glass in there and, a, and it was a little bit curved and so i kind of like how this turned out i'll do this really quick i um do a quick flip through on this simple pages uh use some designer papers and i added the same lace here as i did along here and around the little image i used some of the same um dictionary pages like i did in the big um in my big book and pretty much it's kind of the same thing only just on a smaller level this this is a chroma quilt book and I thought that was really cute in there and so I am going to make a bunch of these and I'll show you some of my what I did that's a little different than what she's done the same lace in there I have it like three pages or something in there and so this is a lot more simple, which is, you know, in some ways I like the smaller books because you can um, do, you know, just a little bit of a project in it and you don't feel overwhelmed by the whole journal uh, to fill it. Which, if you're like me, sometimes will get bored with one and want to go on to something else. But I, I like this. And so I'm going to see it's just a single signature here. And I used designer paper both on the inside and the outside. And what I did was I used 
um, like a chipboard. Now this is a heavy chipboard that it's pretty thick that you get like maybe on the back of a uh, wa heavy watercolor uh, papers that you buy at the, at the thrift, uh, not thrift store, at the, you know, at uh, like Hobby Lobby or something. And then I cut it to the size that I want. And then on these, what I did was I did take this photograph album and I have some other ones, but I haven't, I put them somewhere and I'm going to get them out, but they have a lot more different shapes to them. But this one only has like a, this type of an arch and a square on these. And I basically cut these down and uh, put them on there and it makes a nice little area. And uh, I have a couple of images for these particular ones. I'm going to use a Joan Walsh Anglin on one. Um, but I wait until I painted it. And I'm going to use another um, another uh, Eloise Wilkins picture. This is Mary Had a Little Lamb. I just popped that back out there. And what the way I do this is the way I do this paint here is uh, if you'll see, I'm gonna look at, show you some of the, the technique. Basically, in fact, this one's really kind of cool. See if you can see the colors underneath. And I didn't use a crackle like she does on it. There's an easy way to kind of get that effect right here. And that is you take several colors and uh, these are some colors I was working on here. And basically you'll take one paint it, paint the whole thing, and while it's still almost dry, then you take another one and kind of dry brush over the top of it, and you'll notice that it kind of mixes, it mixes around and gives several layers of colors. You can do two or three colors. On this, I just did a pink underneath and a yellow, and I like how that turned out because the colors underneath sort of show through. And then I take, uh, and you can take your uh, ink and just kind of give it more of an aged effect by going around the edges and stuff like that right here. And so that's how I'm going to be doing some more. I'm going to be, and then I use this on the back. And then on the thin piece, in, and I use a very thin piece of the same chipboard here. But before I do that, I want to completely paint these. Then I use a piece of fabric that is goes clear over both. And then after I put the fabric around, then I add my inside pieces before I ever put my paper. And this is a very easy, quick process. And I think uh, there's many YouTube um, people that have showed the same process. And uh, I just like to cha you know, get colors and things that all match. And so that's what I'm going to do with these. And then um, if you want to, instead of using a photograph album like so, you can also, let me grab this, hold on. Uh, take regular thinner chipboard and you take your um, Sizzix and I've taken, and I imagine there's some other Sizzix, but these are the ones I have, is I have this oval, which I did for this one. See, you can see it's the oval. And also this one. And what I do is I take a piece that's almost the exact size there and very neatly and carefully put it in there. And when you punch it out, let me make this so it's straight. Let's see if we can get this through now. Okay. Let me punch this out and I'll show you. Okay, what you get, um, oh, it didn't punch it out all the way, dang. I'll see if I can line this up. Let me just do another one real quick to make sure I did it right so it'll show you. 
I don't know why the first part of it, I didn't get it in there right. So I'll be more careful about getting the entire thing here. Because I want to show you how I use it. So I've set this Sizzix aside here. And um, what you have is this this piece right here and this could be used for something else but when i use this on uh, the thinner chipboard here that i punched out and put it here then i can put the same after i've glued this in fact you can do two thicknesses you know it, this isn't cut out but if you do two thicknesses then it's you know has a deeper recess in it and then after you glue it there, and after you do the painting, then you can put your image in here afterwards. And then do the same thing. You paint the back, both pieces, and then put your book together like I've, I've demonstrated. And so I do want to make some more of this size right here. I'm probably going to put some little tabs in here. And I have a lot of these little embroidery and and um oh crafty things that i they're really old and i like them in here because it kind of goes with the little girl and i will be making a bunch more of these and so what i'm doing is just making a smaller version smaller versions of my larger book which i'm going to be using this for myself it was so much work uh, and I really like it. Maybe I'll make some to sell eventually, but not right now. I have too many other projects, but I'm going to send these to the local store when I'm finished because I um, uh, need to make a bunch more little ones. Now, your other Sizzix, you can choose this one. You can actually uh, do it with this here. And but Well, there's actually one that's just the square by itself this one and uh this one you can use this piece here and add another piece here like you, i did on this one on this one i used this piece if you can see it can you see that it's like a frame and i used this piece here and then just added another piece down here and you can't even tell after i put the little you know, rows of uh, leaves here. And so it, it works really good. But the I, you can also take this little scallop thing and make something out of it too, you know, and put it on there as well. And so I just wanted to show you what I was doing with the Sizzix. And I will also be using... Um, I get, I have a bunch of these photo albums, and oh, I love some of them because they have little circles, uh, ovals, long pieces, you name it, and you can just take take one of those pages right out and cut it. I have a really great uh, cutter, as I've told you before, a great big industrial cutter, so I can cut these how I want, and. Um, put them right on here and you can see I've glued it and then I'm going to sand this because it's a little bit shiny and I always sand it and then I'm going to use it for the cover and then I will put the image in afterwards so that is what I'm working on right now and I thought maybe you would enjoy seeing uh what I've done and what I'm doing with the large book compared to the little um smaller versions of the same thing and um I hope you enjoyed that. Um, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment and uh, tell me what you think. And you might want to try this yourself because they're really it's a really fun project. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.